continuing with theater, focusing on opera, musical theater, and ballet. We're still in the Romantic period, 1820 to 1900, on chapter 46, entitled Poetry in Motion, Tchaikovsky and the Ballet. The book has these clever titles for the chapters, and sometimes you have to figure out what they're talking about. Tchaikovsky and the ballet, got it. Poetry in motion, well, a ballet doesn't have any words, but it has a lot of motion because ballet is not, there's no dialogue, there's no spoken word, there's no sung part, it's dance. So everybody kind of says, oh, I know what a ballet is, jumping around on the stage, and, and it's extremely difficult to do dancing in ballet. The lady dancer in ballet is called a ballerina. Everybody knows that. What is the guy dancer called in ballet? Ballerino? No. It's called a dancer in French. It's dancer, but it's they say dancer. And we're going to sample a ballet by Tchaikovsky, Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky. Guess which nationality Tchaikovsky is. You got it. He was Russian. 1840-1893. Might say the second half of the Romantic period. Ballet became an independent dramatic form in the 18th and 19th centuries, particularly in France and Russia. And uh, very popular in France uh, in the 1700s. The ballets of Russian composer Peter Ilyich Tchaikovsky, the Swan Lake, Sleeping Beauty, and the Nutcracker remain central to the repertoire today. And just before I started this video, I got an email advertising a live performance December 11th in Albuquerque of the Nutcracker, the piece of music we'll sample. And of course, it's generally put on, I don't remember when it hasn't been put on in December in El Paso by a professional group. It's a wonderful piece of music that's very popular and it's a Christmas story, basically. Louis the Fourteenth, a court dancer from the era of Louis the Fourteenth, he reigned between sixteen forty three and seventeen fifteen, and he himself liked to dance. I don't know if he danced the ballet, but he did dance and had um, dancers he, he worked with, maybe some kind of a ballet. In the Renaissance, the courts of kings, dukes, lavish festivals, theatrical entertainment. Ballet has been around for quite some time. Of course, in different countries called different things. Ballet is featured in French opera. When we watched the Henry Purcell, Dido, and Aeneas, and when the sailors wake up, I believe I would call that ballet, the dancers. It's certainly a, a dance that they did, and it, it appeared to be ballet-like. Very popular in France and Russia, primarily. A choreographer. Do you know what a choreographer is? The person who, who writes the dances, who makes the dances. So even though a ballet is dancing, it's about telling a story. And the dancing is not always the same. So it's one of those things that the director of the ballet has the opportunity to take a lot of discretion with how the production is made. The structure, pas de deux, dance of two, I believe it is. This is a... Uh, a nutcracker. You know what a nutcracker is? It's a device which you crack nuts. Walnuts, other kinds of nuts. Nuts now, they're all shelled. I don't know how they do that, but I'm sure you can buy nuts that are not, and you have to have a nutcracker to open the nuts. Take the shell off. Russian, son of a government official, studied at the Conservatory of St. Petersburg, music taught at the Moscow Conservatory, 
extremely sensitive nature, prone to depression, social pressures. He was a homosexual. He married a student with the intent of, uh, he was pressured into doing it. And it lasted about three weeks. <laughs> he had a patron uh, for most of his career. This lady, a wealthy widow, became his patron. A patron is somebody that gives you money. And they never met. And early in his career, she contacted him and said, I would like to give you a stipend, a, a check every month. And of course, he said, that sounds good. And he, she wanted to support his, his art and his career. And later in his life, when he had plenty of money and he didn't need the stipend anymore, he contacted and they had communicated over the years, never met. And he wanted to meet her. And, and was insisting on it. And she got mad and cut off the stipend completely. They never met. So Tchaikovsky was popular all over the world, well, Europe and the United States, anybody that cared about ballet. And he wrote other types of music, a number of symphonies, eight operas, seven symphonies, four concertos. This one piano concerto is very popular. Chamber music, choral songs, but uh, comment on his homosexuality, because he lived in St. Petersburg. The water was not safe to drink, first of all. And they had signs up all over the place, do not drink the water. He had an affair with a nephew of some uh, official in the Russian government. I don't know how old the nephew was. There was a little bit of a quiet scandal about this. And Russia was concerned this was going to be an embarrassment to them because he was an international figure. The story goes, and it's not textbooks like this, but I've had it repeated to me by people that are in Europe, that after this happened or during this happened, and they, they couldn't you know arrest him because this would be an embarrassment also. So they, they didn't want the news to come out, but they, they wanted the, the official wanted to... Uh, prosecute Tchaikovsky for whatever reason. And um, so a number of officials appeared at Tchaikovsky's house, lawyers and doctors and government officials stayed for several days. And the, the housekeeper reported that there was shouting and arguing. Um, then after a while, actually they didn't stay for several days. They, they stayed there and some of the people left and a few people stayed. And then after three days, Tchaikovsky was dead. And it was reported that he died from drinking the bad water. And this is typical of Russians, how they take care of business. And to this day, they are accused of uh, why people disappear. The use of poison has been one of the favorite ways of having your enemies disappear in Russian. From Tchaikovsky on to this day. The last few years, there was an agent that was poisoned in London, Russian agent. And apparently, as the Ukraine war goes on, a number of Putin's close allies, I guess you call them, they hope to be his allies, have disappeared. This is the way the Russians handle things. They throw homosexuals off the roof. That's how they deal with that. <laughs> Terrible. Uh, the story, The Nutcracker, written by somebody else. It's about a Christmas party where Clara and Fritz receive a uh, nutcracker from their godfather. Clara goes to sleep. She dreams about the nutcracker, becomes a handsome prince. And so here we have uh, some exoticism. So she has this dream about that's that's what the storyline is. She dreams this. The choreographer, Marius Patipa. This is the famous dance from the Nutcracker, the tree pack dance, three Russian dancers. We're going to sample that. We're going to sample the dance of the sugar plum fairy. Uh, had to celeste at the end of the video. I'm going to play a little documentary on Telesta. 
the instrument itself, and then the tree pack bands. Listening guide. There are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven different dances in the whole ballet, and we're going to sample two of them. Again, this is music that I would be surprised that you had not heard someplace. Here's our first sampling, a wonderful dance, the Sugar Plum Fairy. amazing performance. It's very short. Let's listen to another example of the same dance. Again, it's a very short.
tremendous athleticism is required. Very painful to stand on your toes. And the treat back dance, again, very short. Tremendous muscles needed in the legs to perform this dance. And it's a traditional Russian dance. And of course, part of the ballets of the, the dances of this ballet. Let's watch another version of it. The same, it's very, it's very short. A review, ballet, a dance form featuring a staged presentation of group or solo dancing that includes music, costumes, and scenery. The Mask is an English genre of aristocratic entertainment that combined vocal and instrumental music with poetry and dance developed during the 16th and 17th centuries. It's often referred to as roots of opera, but apparently a lot of dancing in a mask. And the past they do, a dance for two, an established feature of a classical ballet. You expect that at some point in the ballet, there will be a pas they do. Celesta is a percussion instrument resembling a miniature upright piano. A celesta, a percussion instrument resembling a miniature upright piano with tuned metal plates struck by hammers that are operated by a keyboard. Let's watch this short video demonstrates the celesta. 
Hi, I'm Kelly Zerker and I play piano with the Colorado Springs Philharmonic. The celesta is a really fun instrument to play and to hear and it adds such a magical sound to music uh, as in the Nutcracker. And the celesta sound is different than what we hear on the piano. The sound is produced by hammers hitting on metal, striking metal, which is very different from the piano sound, which is hammers striking a string. So we could say this is a little bit more belonging to the percussion family. It almost sounds like the bells or vibraphone. Some very famous examples of times that you might have heard the Celesta and not even thought about it would be from Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood theme. And of course, the famous Nutcracker Sugar Plum Fairy Dance. And that will end our introduction to ballet, chapter 46, and Tchaikovsky's Nutcracker Ballet. Incidentally, a sweet, oftentimes you'll see the word Nutcracker sweet. And a sweet is a the music, the music from the ballet, modified for stage performance without dancing. And this is often the case with the Nutcracker that it's performed with music only and no dancing. So that was called a Nutcracker Suite as opposed to the Nutcracker Ballet. The end. <laughs>